Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. I've done a few implicit differentiation problems on my channel before, but this one looks a little bit different than the ones that I've done. So I wanted to go through this problem. And actually this is an interesting one because this problem was suggested to me by someone watching one of my other YouTube videos and they left a comment uh, asking about this problem. So I decided I'd make a video out of it. So. It's a good reminder for you. If you have questions, be sure to drop them in the comments of my videos. I'm happy to help however I can. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this problem. So normally with an implicit differentiation problem, the first thing we do is take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of our equation, right? We're looking for dy dx, so that tells us we're gonna have to take the derivative with respect to x because we have a dx on the bottom here. However, there's kind of two ways we could go about doing that. With this problem, we don't want to necessarily just do that right off the bat. I mean, we certainly could, and that may be, you know, a solid option for us. But what we could do also is if we wanted to, we could foil out these parentheses. So distribute, you know, this term times that one, that one times that, that times that, and that times that. So foil that out and get kind of an expanded out version that we could then apply implicit differentiation to. Our other option is to just apply implicit differentiation right off the bat and use the product rule where x minus y is one of our functions and x squared plus y is our other function. And in fact, in this case, that may be the easiest option for us. So that's what we can do is we can just go ahead and take the derivative with respect to x of this entire equation, both sides. So for this left side of our equation, the derivative of y squared with respect to x is actually going to require the use of the chain rule because y is a function of x. So basically we have some function of x being raised up to the second power. So using chain rule, basically we want to call our inside function y and then our outside function is going to be the, where this squared comes into play. So chain rule says take the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside alone. So that'll just be power rule, right? Bring the two down in front leave the inside the same and then by the power rule we also need to lower our power by one so 2y to the one is just the same as 2y and then by chain rule we need to multiply that by the derivative of our inside function well if our inside function is y we're taking the derivative of y with respect to x the derivative of y with respect to x is just going to be dy dx this is gonna be equal to the derivative with respect to x of this entire right side of our equation. So we're gonna do that using the product rule. So product rule says the derivative of this whole thing is just gonna be the derivative of our first function times the second function. So we'll have the derivative of our first function times our second function, and then plus our first function times the derivative of our second function. So let's kind of break down these pieces now. We'll keep the left side of our equation the same, so it'll just be 2y dy dx. And then the derivative with respect to x of x minus y, we can just kind of think of each of these individually. The derivative of x is just one, so we're gonna get one minus the derivative of y with respect to x, which is just dy dx. And then that's going to be times x squared plus y. And then plus x minus y times the derivative of x squared plus y. So with x squared, since we're taking the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of x squared, we'll just use the power rule, which is just bring the 2 down in front and lower our power by 1. And then the derivative of y with respect to x is, again, going to give us a plus dy dx. So now what we want to go ahead and do is simplify this right side of our equation. So to do that, we really just have to foil each of these and then foil, I'm sorry, foil these two terms and then foil these two terms. So again, we're going to keep the left side of our equation the same. And then we're going to get foiling this out, we're going to get one times x squared is just going to be x squared. And then one times y is just going to be plus y. And then negative dy dx x squared is just going to give us minus x squared dy dx minus dy dx times y is going to give us y dy dx and then we're going to foil out this as well so we're going to get x times 2x is going to give us 2x squared 
x dy dx minus y times 2x is going to be minus 2xy and minus y times dy dx is going to be minus y dy dx. So now at this point it's going to look a lot like a lot, a lot of other implicit differentiation problems. We want to get all of our dy dx terms on one side of our equation and our non dy dx terms on the other side. So let's go ahead and since we already have a dy dx term over here we will either add or subtract any term that has a dy dx in it from the right side over to the left side of our equation. This term right here has a dy dx, so we're going to do minus x squared dy dx from both sides. This term here has dy dx, so we're going to add y times dy dx to both sides. This term here has a dy dx, so minus x dy dx. And then lastly, we have plus y dy dx. So what that's going to do is it's going to cancel that term out. It's going to cancel this term out. It's going to cancel this term out and it's going to cancel this term out. So let's just kind of orga get organized here. So let's look at all of our like terms on each side of our equation now. So over here on the left, we have two y dy dx. We also have plus another y dy dx, and then plus another y dy dx. So we have two of them here, one of them here, and one of them here. So we have actually four y dy dx being kind of combined, combining our like terms. And then we also have an, a negative x squared dy dx, and then a negative x dy dx. So that accounts for all of our terms over here on the left side. Now on the right side of our equation, we have an x squared plus a 2x squared. So that's actually going to give us 3x squared. And then we have a y and then a minus 2xy. So plus y minus 2xy. Okay, so now we've moved all of our dy dx terms over onto the left side, all of our non dy dx terms over to the right side. So now what we can go ahead and do, since every term over on the left side of our equation now has dy dx in it, we can factor that out. So if we pull dy dx out of the left side of our equation, if we take the dy dx out of this term, we'll be left with 4y. Take the dy dx out here, we'll have negative x squared left over. Take the dy dx out here, we're going to have negative x left over. And then the right side of our equation will just leave as is. And now, since we're trying to find dy dx, all we have to do is divide this whole piece over to the other side. So dividing both sides by 4y minus x squared minus x, we're just going to be left with dy dx equals 3x squared plus y plus 2xy all over 4y minus x squared minus x. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel. Those are great ways to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this.